What's going on everybody? So you want a crypto? I'm Joe, I'm your host, and today, UBX. Uh, we're going to call it a $100 million market cap, but, you know, what does that really mean? What is it going to take for this thing to explode? We're going to talk some numbers, we're going to do a price prediction, and we're going to compare this to like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and their numbers, so you can kind of get a feel on, you know, why people really like the altcoins, and altcoin season's coming up, and these explosions are going to be huge, and I'm going to explain why. It's disproportionate to some of the larger coins. Anyway, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. And as always, you know, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. Here we go. So UBX is currently coming in with a market cap roughly of $100 million. It's a little under. They have it listed at 91, almost 92 million on uh, coin market cap. When we go over, normally I would try to find this information here on the the UBX network site, but their market cap right now must be under some sort of maintenance or something because it's listed at zero. We go down to the center where our numbers usually are and market cap is zero, volume is zero. Still list circulation and value transferred, but it doesn't list a market cap, nor does CoinGecko. Uh, there's no market cap circulating supply or anything like that. So take that as you will. I'm gonna call it just under 100 million. So if we're looking at a hundred million dollar projects, you know, how does UBX compare to like Bitcoin, Ethereum and stuff like that when it comes to money value? So Bitcoin, if you think that, you know, Bitcoin's going to get up right now, Bitcoin's about 50,000 and that's a $1 trillion market cap. These numbers are just rough. They're kind of rounded to make it easy, but so $50,000 Bitcoin, $1 trillion in market cap. Okay. Uh, if you want to get $500,000 Bitcoin, you need $10 trillion. And if you want a million dollar Bitcoin, $20 trillion. That's what the market cap needs to be. For a million dollar Bitcoin, $20 trillion. Uh, $125,000 Bitcoin, you're looking at about $2.5 trillion uh, total market cap. For Ethereum, if you want to get into some numbers on this, uh, right now it's running at about $3,500 for Ethereum, and that's $400 billion in market cap. So if you want to go $7,000 Ethereum, that's an $800 billion market cap. $10,000 Ethereum would be just a little bit under $1 trillion, I believe. $17,500 Ethereum, $2 trillion, and $35,000 Ethereum, $4 trillion. Total market cap just for that coin, or just for Ethereum. Okay, UBX. It's a $100 million project, right? 0 0.0025 at $100 million. So if we want to 10x this, we need to get a billion dollars total market cap. That would 10x. And if we want to bring this up to a dollar, we basically need a $4 billion market cap, 40x for a dollar UBX, okay? So, before we get into that, I, I wanna break down just how much $100 million and $1 trillion is. So if we could take 10 projects at $100 million projects, that's $1 billion. 100 would be 10 billion, 1,000 would be 100 billion. So you can get 10,100 million dollar projects totally funded by $1 trillion worth of revenue coming in, you know, or money coming in, fiat, wherever it comes from, right? That's 10,000 altcoins that could explode. Or, you know, maybe not 10,000, but that's thousands of altcoins at two or three, ten million dollars that could explode up to a hundred million dollars with just one trillion. On the other hand, one trillion dollars would only double Bitcoin, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying, comparatively, it's very disproportionate growth, right? And it makes sense because you know, it takes smaller amounts to double exponentially up to that $1 trillion. So basically, you know, for Bitcoin to double right now, that's 20,000 projects that could be funded for the $2 trillion. That's a lot in perspective. Uh, so UBX, it's gone up, you know, but it hasn't seen that major parabolic growth yet. And I, I think that we had this big retracement all the way back down We've made a growth, we're kind of coming back. But overall, we're still holding over half. Quick lighting issue fixed. And so yeah, we're still holding half the value, right? That's good, uh, you know? And I think that we're getting primed for some growth, but I don't think it's coming just yet. I think that we're gonna pull back a little bit. And I think we're going to come back and we're going to test this range right in here. So we're going to pull back to, 
you know, this 0 0 1, 0 0 0.001861.001895 range, I think is what we're going to look at coming down. Uh, but then once we do, I think we'll start going back up and we're going to try and start testing some new, you know, 0 0.0028, 0 0.00315, and then, which is going to be like right in this range. So we, we should see this start to come up here. Once we do, I think we'll be starting to push all the way up to 0 0.005 and uh, new all time highs. But I think that first, you know, it's kind of, we're still watching. I think this is going to come down before it goes up. That's my opinion. And you know, those are just some rife, rough price predictions. Uh, when we look at the global crypto market, here's Bitcoin, you know, we got 1 trillion, Ethereum, 400 million market cap. And then it drops, you know, a quarter of that to third place Binance, and then you know a little bit less but yeah so when we we're talking about those ten thousand hundred million dollar projects when we get down here uh the low 400s on here is where ubx is right now you know it would be probably in this range right here at that hundred million so that's 400 of the would we say eight thousand different coins right because if you take the nine thousand six hundred on coin market cap and we look at the 7,000 that CoinGecko says, that's a little over 8,000, you know, 8,250-ish different coins. So there, it's starting to make a little bit of sense, you know, but how much money is a trillion dollars really going to go? Where are we going to get this? So gold, total market cap of gold is $11.5 trillion. Uh, silver is $1.5 trillion. Palladium is half a trillion dollars. And platinum, one-third of a trillion dollars. All right, just for perspective, fiat markets, uh, Chinese yuan right here. That's about 30. If you do the math on this and convert it to U.S. dollars, we're looking at about thirty five point two trillion dollars. Uh, USD, twenty point one trillion. And if you do the euro math to USD, you're looking at sixteen and a half trillion. Rough numbers for perspective, right? So China is almost double the euro by fiat market cap, currencies by market capitalization. Links will be below if you want to check it out. These numbers are pretty close to the same uh, through coin market cap. So, you know, tell me what you think. So here's a link and again, they're below, but you know, it shows different where they're talking about Bitcoin is the third largest currency. This was May 19th, 2021. And I don't want to focus too much on all of this. I know we're here for the UBX stuff, but more into the money because the money is where it all comes from right all coins get their money from bitcoin and ethereum bitcoin and ethereum get their money from the real world it, it, all coins do too but you're not gonna it's very rare that someone just jumps in and buys ubx as the first coin I, it, I don't think that that happens i think they're gonna buy ethereum they're gonna buy bitcoin they're gonna buy cardano polka dot tether something in the the coinbase top 10 right or the binance top 10 something like that uh Anyway, so if we look right here, the total value of the world easily accessible money, that's the M1 money supply for the entire world, is roughly valued at $35.2 trillion. The broad money, that's your M2 money supply, is valued at $95.7 trillion. That's all the money in the world. So if you add these up, you know, you're looking at, what, $130 trillion is your M1, M2 money supply in the world, right? And 7% of that is in a physical form and 93% of that is in a non-physical form. This link right here is really cool. It's got tons of different breakdowns for money. Uh, Fortune 500, it talks about, you know, how many different billionaires. Cryptocurrencies, uh, the total value was 244 billion when they made this. So, you know, it's gone up a little bit. And this is about a year old, just so we know. But it's good information and here we go. UBIX, or excuse me, UBX. I always want to say UBIX because that's the way it's spelt, but uh, we can't see the market cap. It's a DAG directed acyclic graph. Uh, UBIX is the first one to do the Node.js. It says right here, UBIX is our hybrid DAG, fully built in Node.js, first one ever, four people, team of 17. Uh, there's a UBIX exchange, silent notary, and that's, uh, you know, making what's on the blockchain, admissible in court, legal evidence. We have UB Kiri crowd feeding, DeFi gate, wallet funds. Um, yeah, you can keep going through this. We're not really gonna deep dive. We're just kind of updating and looking what's going on. Here's our roadmap. 
So what is a directed acyclic graph in cryptocurrency? I've made some videos. I'll put some links throughout this video just to kind of help you out. But basically, once we get through this uh, at the beginning, you know, blockchain is a distributed ledger technology and it's, you know, the blocks are sequential. They go from one to the other. You can't circle back. Uh, I think we most people have a general idea of what a blockchain is. So the DAG and what makes it a little bit differently is uh, here's a kind of a graph. Instead of it being sequential, it kind of sp spreads out, but it's still directional. So it goes from one to the other. It's acyclic. It can't circle back on its own. Uh, this really gets into a lot deeper stuff. And I don't want to read this whole thing to you, but basically here's some of the pros. Speed, no mining, no transaction fees, and no scalability issues. Some of the cons so far for DAGs. Uh, they're not entirely decentralized and uh, not really tested to scale yet. Through DAG, base cryptocurrencies have been around for a few years. They have a long way to go before seeing widespread use. As such, it is difficult to predict what incentive users might have to exploit the system in the future. Uh, DAGs are certainly an interesting technology for building cryptocurrency networks. So far, there are relatively few projects that use the data structure and you know they really haven't evolved fully. So. That's kind of why this is a fun project. It's, you know, on the cusp of, it's not new. It's been around for a long time. The technology has been around for a long time. There's a lot of other cryptocurrencies and stuff that we can talk about, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I, I, what they're trying to do is basically be an all encompassing entity, you know, an Oracle a platform, private, public, uh, let's see if I can go right here real quick. Uh, DAG blockchain hybrid consensus into a single P2P. Users can create their own blockchains of various types, including private. So you have private and public blockchains. Using them to service their business needs, uh, all created blockchains are in a single address space in a common network and various types of tokens. In addition to integration at the network level, the team is developing an interface that is a super app built on microservice architecture that allows various internal applications to be integrated with each other, providing users with seamless use of various services you can get into some more on this through other links and the ubx stuff but yeah I, i'm pretty bullish on this and i think we're going to see new all-time highs i think that when we start looking at the numbers right here 10 billion i mean uh, the 1 billion dollar market cap 10x i don't think that that's even i, I think that that's not going to be a problem uh, it'll take a little while it depends on the adoption how it goes as far as the time frame goes but uh, a quarter of a cent to maybe, it really depends on the bull market, but I, I would say a quarter of a cent to maybe a third of a cent would be my, my price prediction for the next uh, three to five months, you know, and that's being super conservative. If there's any form of adoption, that's going to explode beyond that, but it's kind of where I'm at right now. And again, I see a little bit of a pullback before I see this going up. That's where I'm at. Uh, but it all depends on Bitcoin. It depends on how the altcoin season goes and so many other factors. All right, so moving on. UBXT, the one that is not UBX, but we should talk about UBOTS. Number 704, it's got it at just under, or just over nine cents. Uh, it says 500 million circulating supply, 346 million of those are in circulation. $32 million market cap, so relatively low. And no major huge growth right here. Really, the highest they've seen over the last 30 days is 16%. Uh, here we go. So what, what are we looking at with UpBots right here? All-in-one trading ecosystem for the modern trader. Trade crypto, DeFi, Forex, and commodities manual or with bots on a brand new trading platform built from the ground up on the blockchain by traders. And uh, it's not really a deep dive, but I wanted to at least let you know what UBXT was. I'm kind of bullish on it, actually. Uh, it looks like you can maybe do a little arbitrage when you get in there. You can show the different platforms and the price changes and you can build bots on this. Uh, you can do some manual trade, portfolio management. Um, and if you don't know what arbitrage is, it's basically when you're buying and selling at the same time to capitalize on different prices. You know, so if you find that it's on Coinbase for a dollar and KuCoin for 50 cents, you buy a whole bunch on KuCoin for 50 cents and sell them on Coinbase for a dollar. Uh, but usually it's not that dramatic. There's a lot of discrepancy in crypto though sometimes and you can, you know, find a little bit of, anyway, moving on. Uh, so DeFi tools, trading bot creator and courses and marketplace. So, and this one's growing. So it's a still, 
you know, early. But Upbots is currently free right here. And they think that uh, they do have some fees that they talk about, but uh, it's only based on profits. And it's, you know, when you get a little deeper into this payments, performance, referrals, HODL program, token, excuse me. Uh, but here's your CEO, uh, Benjamin Duvall, and the rest of your team. So it's not some anonymous team. They got a lot behind it. They trade up bots on FTX, Binance Broker, Dex, Huobi, Bybit, Kraken, OKX. And then, you know, here's some frequently asked questions. Upbots, all-in-one platform that brings together the best in crypto trading. Uh, you know, a little bit more if you want to dig into this. So here is, uh, what is a UBXT and the UBX token? I'm just going to do some more highlights real quick. Some of the projects and the partners include a reserve, Binance Broker, Alameda Research, the company behind FTX and Project Serum, OKX, and Dex.ag. Uh, it's a comprehensive platform that tackles the cryptocurrency trading from every angle, whether it's through tools and strategies, the protocol has everything covered. Uh, unlike other bots currently in use in the trading arena, upbots can be used on both centralized and decentralized exchanges. The protocol operates on the Ethereum blockchain with a connection to the upbots ecosystem enabled through MetaMask. As such, the platform offers a non-custodial approach where users are in complete control over their virtual wealth. With investors losing funds in many exchanges, both centralized and decentralized, have control over your trading assets at all times. And this is a vital step in guarding your virtual wealth against malicious actors such as hackers and scammers. All right, so here's some crucial features. You don't, no need for help trading. Uh, it's, there's a lot of uh, tutorial stuff and how to set it up. And you know, you have to play with it and get a feel for it and stuff like that. But uh, there's an autopilot, and then here's your cryptocurrency. UBXT is the protocol's native token. The currency is developed using Ethereum ERC-20 standards. And it has a total supply of 500 million tokens. You can, here's some about staking. Uh, UBX investors can choose to stake their wealth for either seven to 30 days, or seven or 30 days. However, the longer the staking period, the higher the rewards. Seven days staking period is 16% APR, while the 30 day is running in at about 25. Um, Here's some how to. So Upbots to debut, debut a multi-exchange crypto and DeFi trading platform. And you know, this is a little bit, what's the date on here? October 20, so fall of 2020. But here's, you know, some stuff facing traders and stuff like that. But here we go, Crypt here's a competitor analysis chart. It talks about Dex, Manual, all the things that Upbot offers versus, you know, some of the competitors all the way down to like eToro and stuff like that. So they're basically on this list. They're the only one that offers decentralized exchange trading, uh, blockchain based. They're the only one that's blockchain based and uh, the only one that offers staking. So, you know, something to consider right there. Here's their Twitter. If you want to check it out, they have uh, over 5,500 users as of May 5th and the first 10 cryptocurrencies make up 88% of the total cryptocurrency market. So it doesn't take much for these little coins to go pump. As we talked in our numbers before, just this link has some pretty cool stuff, but uh, the confidence of cryptocurrency as of January, 2021 is almost hundred percent. So 97% of people that they surveyed in 2021, which is 60,000 users said that they had a strong faith in digital assets. And according to the statistics, over half of the respondents considered venturing into it as a source of income. And then right here, every 10 minutes, the number of Bitcoins in the market increases. Miners have always, basically what they're saying right here is 144 a day times 6.25 coins gives you 900 cryptos daily. Cool, cool. 44 amazing cryptocurrency statistics. And this was April 30th, 2021. It's just a lot of fun, you know, cool stuff if you want to check it out. 65% of cryptocurrency users are Bitcoin owners. Uh, if you want to talk about, like, here we go, there were 68 million wallets users by February 21. And active user wallets, uh, it's really starting to change. So, like, I just looked recently, and uh, what, EOS, Flow, uh, and wax, I believe, have surpassed Ethereum. 
So maybe we'll talk about that soon. Anyway, I don't want to ramble too much. I wanted to give you some UBX because I know you like it. But really, I, I wish I had better news, but I think we're still just, we're watching. It's going to go down for a little bit as long as we stay kind of within this corridor. Once this gets a little bit, you know, give it another week or two, and I think we'll maybe see some up movement. So and that's what I got. Cheers, everybody.